I'm Brian, this is Greg with Gilmore Data Recovery. We are here to talk today about everybody's favorite subject, RAID 5 Data Recovery. Uh, if you've stumbled upon this video, it's possibly because you're, you know, working at an SMB with kind of an issue on your hands. And maybe your small business server or your little NAS device that was configured with RAID 5, you know, took a dump, which I'm not supposed to say, <laughs> but it did. <laughs> and uh, you know, real briefly, you know, Greg, what is RAID 5? What, what is this technology? Uh, in short, RAID 5 is any configuration of multiple disks that are presented as one single large volume where um, you are allowed to lose one disk or one disk can fail and you will not lose access to any data. So the simplest configuration we see, so I guess the minimum for a RAID 5 is three disks. And two disk RAID 5 is also known as a RAID 1, but it's kind of neither here nor there. Um, the simplest configuration is a three disk array and the capacity of the drives, um, this would basically give a capacity of the volume total to the sum of two drives because you're basically using one drive's worth of redundancy. Yeah, so to make this easy, if we had one terabyte drives here, these are each disks, mm -hmm. we're going to have two terabytes worth of capacity. There's a thingy here called a RAID controller, it can be software, it can be hardware. Uh, the RAID controller's job is to take these independent disks give them to the operating system as one pool of storage. And the way, and, and so at the cost of one drive worth of capacity, we get one drive worth of redundancy. And the way that it accomplishes this very, very briefly, because we don't want to get into mm -hmm. the, the weeds here, because you're sweating what the heck's going on, we find that a little bit of education into what how, what we're up against it really helps you shop for this stuff. Um, so if this was position one and position two on an individual drive, and then we'll make this position three, I'm gonna write the word X or here for exclusive or. Greg, what the heck is exclusive or? Uh, it's a mathematical operation. Um, I'm sure there's a good Wikipedia about it, basically, um, where it's one or the other, but not both. So if you wanna draw a quick truth table, um, basically you can recover uh, um, the, the math works in such a way that you can solve the equation of uh, three components having just two components. Yeah, I'm not going to write any truth tables here. <laughs> I, have, I got my computer science degree like 25 years ago, so uh, what, we're, what I'm going to do instead is just do a, a very mock RAID 5 algorithm here. This is, very, this is uh, overly simplified compared to what we actually see in uh, the real world. But what we see is, so, so data, data block one, data block two, data block three, this is actually what the, this is what I'm saying, like this would be represented to the operating system down here as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to infinity, right? Uh, position one is gonna be on disk one, position two is gonna be on disk two, position one, and then over here is gonna be XOR. And, and basically what happens, if we were to lose disk one, you can run a, an algorithm for position one, XOR, this garbage that's sitting here, and it will spit out the data that's in position two. That's how you, if a disk fails, you can run that math to basically mm -hmm. give yourself an emulated... It's degraded, basically. You can run what's called degraded if you lose a drive, and um, as you'll probably talk about a little briefly in a moment here, um, any good rate controller should scream bloody murder that you're running degraded. So what we actually see when we look at these things is that each disk is going to have about two-thirds of its contents are unique data contents. And one-third of each disk is going to be, it's going to look like garbage to the naked eye. The XOR itself is not individual, individually usable. Yeah, it's basically, it's going to look like a bunch of gobbledygook. It's almost going to look like encrypted data um, in, a lot of, in a lot of ways. But um, what we basically see is that we see these patterns that kind of go through when we look at all three drives at once, we'll see, oh, it looks like this is the rate algorithm. And, you know, sometimes it bounce, the XOR bounces back and forth or they'll do a double XOR here. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things that we see. Again, RAID 5 in general is just any algorithm that allows you to, use, to lose one drive and still keep running. So you are free to implement that however you choose, the most common ways with XOR parity. So what do we see in nature? So what we see in nature is the normal case is that we see a four or three drive rate five come in here and the user is like, it died. 
and that's usually the amount of information we have. Sometimes they'll say what we already know is that two drives have failed. So, so what we see is that, hey, this drive here has failed and this drive here has failed. And there's a reason for that. Usually what happened is this drive failed two years ago or six months ago or three months ago and nobody noticed because the volume was still accessible and there was going to be a slight decrease in speed, not really noticeable though, because again, if anything that lived on the disk, any one of these data blocks that lived on this disk that died, it's going to have to regenerate from the XOR parity and from the other data blocks on disk one. So there'll be a slight performance degradation, probably not noticeable though. Yeah, at a lot of small businesses, no one's going to notice if the rate is 10% slower. Just no one's ever going to notice it. Um, they didn't configure it when they bought it for email notification or they didn't configure a Nagios to monitor physical it. Physical alarm. The physical alarm mm -hmm. a lot of times is shipped off. So when a lot of the big OEMs sell these small business servers, a lot of times it has a physical alarm, but it's off, which blows my mind, but that's just kind of is what it is. Um, so we see two drives are dead. They come into the lab. We see one working drive. We see two dead ones. So can we help and what is this going to cost? Uh, the, the math says that about 19 out of 20 times people send us these, we get back near perfect recoveries. So they, in general, they tend to be pretty recoverable, so that's the good news. The very next question is, you know, how long is this going to take and what is this going to cost? So when people choose our standard service, I would say an average turnaround time for a three or four disc RAID 5 is probably about a week. You know, it, it could be a little less, a little more, especially if the drives are 8 terabyte drives or 12 terabyte drives. You know, it, it, the more machine time we have, there's really not a lot we can do about that. Mm -hmm. But in general, from the day we receive the equipment, it's usually about one week. Uh, cost. So again, usually what we're dealing with is two hard drive repair costs. Individually, those will cost usually somewhere between $500 to $1,500, depending on the type of problem and the type of equipment. And then, you know, normally we're looking at a uh, computer scientist on, you know, Greg's staff, is somewhere usually less than one day of analysis to put all this together. Not always, but usually we're probably looking at kind of four to eight hours of computer scientists to figure out what the most optimal way to build this is. To figure out exactly what, uh, not only what the comp not only what the rate algorithm is, but which combination of disks we need to use to provide the optimal result. Yeah, we need both. And then, and then we're not done. Then we need to figure out how the RAID controller was breaking up its logical units. We need to figure out the file system geometry. There's a whole bunch of work to do after we do the RAID stuff. But in general, rough numbers here, what does a three or four drive RAID 5 cost here at Gilware? You know, I would say normally we're looking at a total cost of $3,500 to $6,000 probably for a normal situation. The more complex the situation, the more complicated the hardware is, the more, oh, this thing was feeding a hypervisor and there's 15 different layers of indirection between us and the data, certainly the cost can be higher than that. The best way to get an idea of cost and how long this is gonna take is to pick up the phone, call the recovery advisor team here at Gilware. They'll take your story, they'll bring it to people like me or Greg, we'll give them enough information to try to dial that quote in as best we possibly can for you so you can make a good decision whether or not to, to hire us to do the job. The vast majority of the time, it's gonna be financially risk-free. We're gonna perform a free feasibility study and only in the event we get you a very successful data recovery and success is most often defined by our clients. Like we are very happy with this result you know, that's when we get paid over here. So uh, anything else to add on the subject, Greg? Uh, not too much. I think you covered it pretty well. Rock and roll. If you need any help, Gilware's here for you. Thank you. Feel free to give us a call. One of our client advisors would be happy to talk about your specific situation and figure out how we can best help you.